We've been leading up to this really oh, all week a lot. <laughs> and today, but this, th the moment is here. This um, was your last newscast here. We're it saying is, goodbye. It is, and, uh, it, and it is so, so wonderful to spend it with you all. And we had to say goodbye to Mr. Kenny, but I'm glad you're here <laughs> yes. tonight. And uh, thank you to everybody. I think I'm going to get a chance to actually thank you. Yes. In just a second. Yeah. My here goodness, in just it's a been second. so fun, and and there's so much cake here in the studio that we'll we'll be out here partying. <laughs> that was for. an amazing well, cake too. Oh, it was amazing. It was. Yeah, Cake Buds provided oh, that. Yeah. We'll be on a sugar buzz the rest of the night. Uh, somewhere in this studio right now is me in uh, fondant. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's surreal. Yeah, to freeze that. We want to keep that. <laughs> it's a much thinner version of me and fondant, so I'm especially fond of him. <laughs> okay, so we want to take fondant of him. Yeah. Oh, I see what you did there. I'm leaving on a that. high note. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we want to take a look back at Josh's amazing career one last time. Josh Smith started at WJHL back in 1999. For the city and county, that's $25,000 in property taxes they have not received. He quickly became an active member of the community, and throughout the years, he has covered countless stories with integrity and compassion, including his special presentation on the anniversary of the John Sevier fire. This building has a story, a story many may have never heard. A story of terror. Josh has always had a passion for news and the ability to take viewers with him to experience what he sees. There is that moment, flames visible, smoke coming from a section of the plant there. His coverage of the Gatlinburg fire showed not just the fire itself, but the hundreds of volunteers who traveled to East Tennessee to support the efforts of the firefighters. And some people have no clue whether their homes are still standing. Josh excelled at the fun stories too. He never hid his love and admiration for Dolly and got to interview her several times over the years. What is it like for you to come home to your hometown and see what has happened to this place? Well, it's a great feeling. It makes me feel very proud, proud for my people. Josh's tenure at WJHL took him out of the region as well. He took viewers to New York City to follow Big Tom of Survivor fame. For Mother's Day, I'm going to give my wife a ride in Central Park. Then in 2010, Josh flew across the country and took Tri-Cities viewers under the waves in the USS Greenville, a nuclear attack submarine that bears the name of the Tri-Cities town. It offered viewers a first ever look inside the submarine and how it was named. After this two full days, we have gathered an immense amount of information about how this ship works, but more importantly, about who the people are on board it, each one of them with a story. And there's the President of the United States. And who could forget then President Donald Trump's campaign visit to the Tri-Cities? Josh was there and had a one-on-one -on -one interview with the president. Besides covering big events, Josh's focus has been on the people of the Tri-Cities. Accurately telling their stories and seeing life from their perspective has always been a priority. There is no better example than the Santa train. Josh spent time gathering perspective from both the organizers who gave away all the gifts to people in Appalachia, but also the folks who received the gifts. Or did you wave to Santa? I did, yes. I did. And he waved back. Josh's vision of educating viewers and opening their eyes to different walks of life is one of the many things that endeared himself to viewers. His weekly Veterans Voice Stories was a great reminder of the heroes that live among us. 93-year-old oh. James Arnold is a man of many talents. Just a dusty old scrapbook with a few torn pages. And Tri-Cities Original took viewers on a tour of the unique places and people who make the Tri-Cities an incredible place. He has done so much in his 24 years, and we thank him from the bottom of our hearts for taking us on his journey. I don't remember that little piece of video of us years ago being in there. For, oh, yeah. Oh, how many hairstyles ago was that? Let me tell you. I, I think I think we look better. <laughs> we have improved we with age. We have improved with age. Yeah. Meanwhile, this one over here hasn't changed it's a, a cold bit. It's aged a bit. It's the yeah. cold studio. The, cold studio the cryotherapy or whatever. Oh. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> we joke because it's always cold in the studio. Yes. We joke it's, uh, to keep yeah. us from looking, looking uh, uh, 
too old. All right, uh, I have a chance to say a word or two. So finally for me today, I want to um, say that if I started right now saying thank you to everyone that I wanted to thank, I would still be sitting here on this couch long after tonight's 11 o'clock news started and that would be annoying. So <laughs> I'm going to be brief. Thank you to all my amazing colleagues here at WJHL, to Sarah Diamond, to Mark, to Kenny, who's off today, to all. They've kept me in this studio on task and they've done it for years and to all the incredible people who work at every office on every floor of this building a big thank you. Thank you to WJHL General Manager Paula Jackson and to our News Director Jay Quaintance who helped me in incredible ways through this challenging process of coming to right now. For them I will always be grateful. Thank you to every source who trusted me. Thank you to every person who trusted me to do an interview. Trust is earned but it's also a gift given, and I am grateful to have been given it by so many people. I wanna thank you to my wife, Kristen, who's here in the studio. She surprised me, as did my sons, Hudson and Elijah. Hudson's away, Elijah's here. My daughter, Lucy Catherine, thank you for your support and your patience and for being my reason for getting out of the bed every day. Thank you to all of you for your loyalty and trust for so many years. We are uh, talking to a void if you don't tune in and listen. You've been there, that's a kindness I'll never be able to repay. And finally, for me, a request. All of us can agree that we live in an incredibly special place. So much beauty, a quality of life that is the envy of the world. There is a lot that could divide us, and it often does, and that's often what we're talking about on the evening news. My hope is that we can celebrate our differences, identify some challenges and come together with the goal of enjoying this life we've been given here and make it better for our kids and for their kids to come. So thank you for letting me. Thank you. That was I great. You. I love you. Thank you. Oh thank you. Thank you. We're gonna miss you, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. That's our time. We'll see you tonight at 11. I'll see you tonight at 11. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're the best.